Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the uh, Superstars of Wrestling Review Series for the 24th of November 1990. We are fast approaching the year 1991. We again do not have that full match, but we or that full year, but we have enough. Uh, there will be highlights of a Ted DiBiase match in this week's episode. However, among other things, we are days after the Survivor Series. Uh, Mr. Perfect, who still has not, uh, at least here, regained the Intercontinental title, although that is coming. Uh, Bobby Heenan promises to get even with the boss man, although he's not happy about it. He also implies that he believes Mr. Perfect will be the Intercontinental Champion. Again, in an inset promo, Perfect actually allows the enhancement guy to get a few offensive maneuvers off before shoving him in the face and kind of going in a direction that's less than friendly. I love Kurt Henning because he has the ability to uh, be arrogant and aggravated without being over the top almost at any given moment. Um, and, you know, he manages to be what I consider to be a quintessential, quintessential uh, intercontinental champion for that time period. I think the last good Intercontinental Champion, probably 97, 98, something like that, uh, as far as, you know, meaningful champion that actually made a career. Anyway, um, crunch on the ankle by Mr. Perfect. Heenan is satisfied, although not as much as he would be if things were moving a little bit quicker. Um, uh, mopping the brow of Mr. Perfect and the inverted neck snap and the uh, eventual Perfect Plex 1, 2, 3 and that eventually leads to a WrestleMania 7 match with Henning and the Boss Man which I think would have been Rude and the Boss Man had Rude hung around. I don't know that for sure. Anyway, uh, Jack Tony basically saying that the Orient Express now will uh, be required to take all of Demolition's matches. Demolition reduced down to two individuals, and Mr. Fuji to blame for all of that. The British Bulldog get an enhancement match with Paul Diamond here. Bulldog talks about uh, being one of the most powerful guys, kind of hinting at a Warlord feud, but not quite there yet. Uh, hard tackle by the Bulldog. Bulldog with a huge monkey flip and gets an advantage. Deep arm drag. Bulldog can still move at this point, even with the extra weight on his face, on his frame. I always tend to prefer Davey a little lighter, uh, although it doesn't add as much power gimmick. Running power slam, and away we go with that as the Bulldog gets a victory. Big Boss Man promises to get rid of Haku and the Barbarian and Bobby Heenan. Uh, Tugboat and Dino Bravo is up next. Uh, they're actually talking about a uh, tag match with uh, Earthquake and Bravo against Hogan and Tugboat at the upcoming house show. Um, Rick Martell, who has to get ready, ready now for one-on-one -on -one confrontation with Jake Roberts. Is there Roberts in an inset promo? Basically says Martell better watch his, ma his back against a blind man. Martell gets driven back by the enhancement talent. It's always interesting. Martell, a former AWA champion, former WWF tag team champion, still able, uh, actually multi-time tag team champion, still able to to uh, be there and give enhancement talent a little bit of extra push in that direction. Uh, Martell, though, with some drop kicks, and then finally a Boston Crab, and a few puffs of arrogance, and away we go. Uh, still trying to push the Warrior in commercials. It doesn't really work, but it's there. Black Demon, enhancement talent of the day, facing off against, now get this, Dustin Rhodes. Uh, Dusty out there with him. Um, and this is one of the few enhancement talent matches that Rhodes has at the time. This is to get him ready for Ted DiBiase and Virgil at the Rumble in a couple of weeks. 
But um, Rhodes looks good. Of course, he's only been in the business a few years at this point. Maybe less than three. A little more than two. Um, too bad he didn't stay around here. Matter of fact, one of the reasons I took Dustin Rhodes seriously as a member of WCW is these matches here. Clothesline and eventually a Bulldog leads Dustin to a victory. Hulk Hogan promises in an event center promo to get rid of the earthquake once and for all. Promises to uh, take Hulkamania to the next level in the 90s. Um, basically insinuates that on Saturday night, December 8th, things are going to change. Hogan, by this point, in year 6 of the push, so pretty major. Uh, LOD out next for an enhancement match there. Black Bart, uh, former... WCCW champion, cheap plug there, if you have not listened to everything we've done there, 340 episodes deep in that, uh, LOD, Kent Carlson, and Black Bart is up next, and, you know, LOD does what they do in enhancement matches here, uh, they're months away from their first title reign, um, a little bit of challenge, but Hawk gets the Enhancement talent up for a press slam. Uh, big clothesline in the corner. Also by Hawk. Uh, actually turns Animal into it, but they work together. And the Doomsday Device. One, two, three. LOD. Successful, but not until you get a uh, belly to belly from Animal. And very little sweat broken by the LOD. They are pretty unstoppable as a team. And we got Tito Santana and a, in a singles match with Sergeant Slaughter. Uh, mere weeks after the, uh, not even a week fully, I don't think. After the Survivor Series where Slaughter was eliminated by Tito from going on to the Ultimate Survivors match. Every cheap tactic, choke, punch, kick uh, that Slaughter can use, he does. It's clear that he's a heel out there with General Adnan as well. Uh, he will use, you know, cheap shots. He will use whatever he can. Santana still looks good throughout the match and manages to get slaughtered down in an arm bar for a bit. Uh, Adnan distracts him and back suplex on Tito. And Slaughter can only get the advantage because of the uh, assimilation of his manager. There is... Continuing a beating post-match, Slaughter basically says a bunch of racist things that uh, Mexican-Americans need to go back where they came from. This brings out Jim Duggan. Duggan and Slaughter becomes a mini-program on the way to the Royal Rumble. And uh, Sl uh, Duggan manages to destroy the Iraqi flag. Uh, Duggan basically says he sees people of all faiths, all religions... All colors of skin, but they're all Americans. Uh, that'd be embarrassing if that was proven to be untrue. Again, why I'm not a fan of patriotic gimmicks under any circumstance, because you don't know who's in your crowd. Anyway, Barbarian in an enhancement match. Um, hard shots against the opponent. Heenan extremely happy. Barbarian uh, hits a running... Uh, Basically running boot and then a shoulder tackle from the top rope. One, two, three. Barbarian gets the victory. And uh, uh, then we go to the event center. Uh, Model Rick Martel promises to be at the Brother Love Show. Give uh, Jake Roberts a bit of a surprise. Maybe a seeing eye dog power and glory. Are your challengers for the hearts at the next house show in the area? And they... Once again, I'm referring to this as a night of mega matches, Tugboat, Dino Bravo, Rockers Demolition, and the Brother Love Show with Jake Roberts, which they seem to have switched. The Brother Love Show with Rick Martell also switched up. Heart Foundation, Power and Glory, and Hogan and Earthquake, I believe. Still here, Big Boss Man and the Barbarian here, and Hogan and Earthquake to cap off the card. They really are are uh, trying and you can see they're starting to drop off the end of 1990 with how hard they're pushing the house shows but that will close us out for november we get a couple shows from december but then we're into 1991 we'll be back with more right after this